Hello and welcome to my video. Today we're going to be doing a comparison between the Leatherman Wave and the Leatherman Surge, two of my most favorite multi-tools. Uh, the Leatherman Wave was introduced in 1998. Uh, it received an update to its current version in 2004. Uh, the Leatherman Surge was introduced in 2006 and received an update in 2013. Now, the Leatherman Wave, since its introduction, has been one of the most popular tools that uh, that Leatherman has ever produced and is probably one of the most well-known multi-tools ever. Uh, it has a very big following and there's a reason for its overall sales numbers because it is a very very capable tool. It was the first tool to introduce uh, outside accessible tools from Leatherman. Little side note, the Leatherman Wave actually appeared in the movie Rush Hour with Jackie Chan in 1998. A little bit of history there for you. We'll start off today by giving you some specifications for the two tools. The Leatherman Wave is in the medium duty or full size multi-tool line measuring four inches and overall length closed, six and a quarter inches in overall length open. It has a, measure, a width measurement of one and seven sixteenths approximately at its widest point and its depth here uh, is eleven sixteenths of an inch. The surge weighs in at uh, 12 and a half ounces. Uh, excuse me, I forgot to mention the wave is eight and a half ounces. The surge weighs in at 12 and a half ounces. It is part of the heavy duty multi-tool line measuring four and a half inches in overall length in the closed position and a full seven inches of overall length in the open position. It is approximately one and nine sixteenths inches wide at its widest point and has a depth of 13 sixteenths, about an eighth inch wider than the wave. So we'll start by going through some of the outside accessible tools. The first thing we'll have out is you'll notice that uh, the knife blades are one-handed opening for both tools for right-handed people. Not so much for left-handed people, but for right-handed people. And everything clicks in with a nice positive liner lock. Uh, they're very secure, very stable. The fitment on a Leatherman is just superb. They both have very nice blade shape for the main blade. All blades on both of these tools are going to be made out of 420 HC or 420 high carbon steel. Not the greatest knife blade, but it does have a couple of key benefits. The first being it's pretty rust resistant. And the second being is that it's very easy to put an edge back on it. Very nice. And I might mention that out of the factory, these two, actually all the blades, come out extremely, extremely sharp. So on the opposite side, we have our serrated sheep's foot blade for each of the tools. And you'll notice on the back of the spine of the serrated blade, you have this uh, jimping here. And that is so that when you're pulling it out of a sheath or out of a pocket, by feel, you can tell which one is the serrated or which one is the standard blade. A uh, little, nice little touch that Leatherman adds. Now most people are going to consider this a rescue blade. Uh, hopefully you never find yourself in a situation where it necessitates using a rescue blade, but if you do, uh, you do have it available on this tool. It's very good, this blade, for cutting strap, webbing. I use mine a lot for cutting rope come very 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 sharp out of the factory and I really like the fact that it has both a standard blade and a serrated blade because I'm not a huge fan of combo blades. So next to that we have our file. Now on the wave you have a diamond coated file here, edge file and then a cross cut combination wood metal file. Now this file is very, very nice for doing touch-up work. I really like this for metal work. So here's where we're going to find one of the key differences between the two is that on the surge, your file is in a blade exchanger. And we might mention that the blades, and this is going to be the same for the uh, saw as it is for the file. They are, the, the wave has about an eighth inch longer length on both the file and the saw by comparison to the to the surge simply due to the uh, the configuration of the blade exchanger. Uh, the blade exchanger has a couple of key features that I really like. The first being is obviously that you can switch it out for the saw 
and the saw does come with it. Uh, the second being that you can exchange this because this is a Bosch T-shank style. You can interchange uh, any Bosch T-shank style fitting to go in there. So if you wanted to put a longer wood saw or if you wanted to add a metal saw to it, you have that flexibility. The retention spring here holds down the thinner aftermarket blades into the housing a little bit more securely. They don't rattle when moved because of that tension spring, but there is some flexibility to them. Uh, it is not perfect, but it does hold them in there uh, fairly decently. And when you're making your cuts, you just, you'll just you have to uh, get your cut started, uh, get it scored pretty accurately, and then you're able to really bear down and cut through whatever material you're trying to get through. Very nice feature to have and something I really, really like about the Surge. So we'll slip this back in here. On the Wave, you have your saw blade on the opposite side. And as we mentioned before, the blades on the Wave are going to be just slightly longer. Uh, because we're able to use two tools in one slot, for the surge that allows the fourth slot to open up for outside accessible scissors. Now, the scissors on the surge are very, very nice. They work well for cutting paper, cardboard, uh, paracord, and other light materials. They're real comfortable in the hand, and I really like these scissors a lot. We're going to find the wave does have scissors, but it its scissors are located on the inside of the tool. So now we'll flip around to the inside, and on the first side we're going to have almost identical tool sets on the first side of each of these tools. So you're going to have your combination can opener, bottle opener, and down here at the base is a wire stripper. The only difference between the two is size and we'll see that the uh, surges has a little bit more of an area for your wire stripping needs. Uh, and that's due, obviously, to the larger size of the surge. You're able to get a little larger tool in there. Next to that, we have the bit exchanger that uses Leatherman's proprietary flattened bits. On one side, you have your standard 3 uh, standard driver. And on the opposite side is a combination number one, number two Phillips driver. Now, there are other tools on the market. Uh, in particular the Gerber center drive which has a very nice driver on it as well that utilizes standard quarter inch bits. Now you do have that capability with Leatherman as well and with the bit exchangers in the uh, Surge Wave Charge series but then you have the addition of uh, the, where you can add on a, an extension and a bit kit which I will leave links to below for you. Uh, this really extends your reach. A couple of the reasons that I like, or maybe it's just because I've become accustomed to this particular driver set, is the fact that, first of all, when you are driving something, as, as can say you have a, a longer machine screw and you want to screw it in, the knurling on the extension is really helpful for, for getting that uh, fastener tightened in the majority of the way. Then you have a couple of options. When it, you can either use it in the closed position, you can use it in the fully open position, or you can use it in this pistol grip formation. And all that allows you to get a lot more torque to either loosen or tighten your fasteners, and something that I really like on the, uh, on the wave and surge equally as well. Now you can get a bit kit for it. As I mentioned before, I'll leave links below for those. So you have the option to add a 42 piece bit kit to each of these tools and the extension. Now the benefit to having Leatherman's proprietary bits is that you're able to carry a lot more with you if you so choose to. Uh, if you try to carry the same amount of, of drivers with you in a quarter inch configuration and a standard bit configuration, the weight would just be immense by comparison and would not be very conducive to everyday carry. Uh, usually because of, the, uh, because of the pouches, the leather pouches on both these tools, generally you only find that one of the bit holders will fit. 
uh, along with your driver and your multi-tool. I usually mix and match them to uh, for my specific needs. I like to carry the Phillips, the standard, and the Torx drivers with me on one. Uh, but T, you know, everybody's a little different. On the opposite side of the tools, well, if we can get it turned around here. On the opposite side of the tools, we're going to find some more differences between the two. So the Leatherman Wave has, for its tools on the opposite handle, has a medium standard driver, has a eyeglass screwdriver that has both uh, Phillips on one side and standard on the other side. And then this is where we're going to find the scissors on the wave. Now they are fairly nice scissors. They work well for cutting, for light cutting tasks, paper, cardboard, but as we mentioned before, they're not the greatest for doing heavier work like cutting through cordage. Uh, when you're trying to cut paracord with them, sometimes they'll have a tendency to roll. They don't cut quite as cleanly as the larger scissors on the surge, but they are fairly effective. On the surge, we have our smaller driver, our large screwdriver, which is 5 16ths. This also works well, well as, a, uh, as a light duty pry bar. Uh, I wouldn't want to put too much pressure on it because they will snap. It's not intended for that use, but it will work. I, I like to use it a lot for opening up paint cans. Uh, it works really, really well for that. And then we come to the last tool that's on the uh, interior tools for the surge and that is the awl, something that a lot of people are going to consider a staple tool in a multi-tool uh, that the surge has that the Leatherman Wave does not have. Now I don't get as much use out of the awl as other people but if you're uh, if you're using your your multi-tool in say a bushcraft or a camping situation you're going to find that the awl is going to be a lot more useful to you and maybe not so much other tools like the file. Oh one uh, I forgot to mention that you can, because of the, the uh, configuration of the file in that exchanger, you are able to use this file to do some touch-up work on your blade in the field if you need to. A great little feature too, and something I've had to use in the past. Now we're going to open them up and look at the pliers and some of the, the you know, one of the biggest, most noticeable difference between the two. Now uh, the Leatherman Wave has a very nice needle nose point on it. Very nice for doing fine work. A matter of fact, I kind of prefer the Waves plier head uh, when I'm doing detail work with uh, my multi with my multi tool uh, on the Wave because it is a little bit narrower. You can get into a little tighter areas with it. Comes with needle nose, regular pliers, wire cutters, and then hard wire cutters. And the most noticeable difference, obviously, is that the Surge has replaceable 154 CM wire cutters and hard wire cutters. Now, the, the Wave, hopefully we're going to be seeing an update for the Wave plier head soon. Uh, being as it's coming into its, you know, or, or into its 20th year of production, I'm hoping that we're going to see them upgrade the Wave plier heads to match that of the Leatherman rebar, which is in the medium duty tool line and does offer the 154 CM replaceable cutters. We're a few days away from SHOT Show 2018 and fingers crossed that they're going to update that plier head to, uh, to match the rebars. A couple of other extra tools that you get on the surge is at the back of the plier head, you have your, <coughs> excuse me, you have your stranded wire cutters and then directly behind that, is a set of wire crimpers. Those work great for uh, making electrical crimping connections on 16, 14, 12 gauge wire. Not perfectly ideal, but they do get the job done and they come in extremely handy. Oh, one other thing of note on the plier head for the surge is because the wave has a rounded outer plier head and the surge has more of a boxy or squared off plier head, this works very well if you are uh, using it as a reaming device to ream the inside of PVC uh, or conduit up to about three quarters of an inch. So a great little feature for deburring the inside of your pipes for plumbers and electricians alike and something I've come to use in the past and I really like about that. I almost wish that they would add some knurling to the outside 
to make it more conducive for that particular purpose. But I don't have the ear of Leatherman, so we'll have to wait and see if they ever add that. So which one of these is right for you? Well, that's going to be pretty subjective. Uh, here are my thoughts. If you are in the trades, if you are a carpenter, electrician, plumber, steel worker, what have you, I really think that the surge is the better option. It gives you a more capable tool set. It comes in a bigger package, uh, but in a work environment, it's you won't notice it quite as much. I really like this for uh, for the trades. I actually EDC this tool at, for my work, and I do work in the trades. I like the surge better for a couple different reasons. Most notice, notice, notably, I'm sorry because of the fact that it does have a little better tool set, but because I have pretty large hands, I wear between a large and, a, and an extra large glove, and the Surge really fits my hand a little better than the Wave does. Now, I carried the Wave from 1999 until the Surge came out in 2006, at which point I switched, and I've carried a version of the Surge ever since. And one thing I can tell you is that when you start using a larger multi-tool, it's sometimes hard to go back to the smaller or the standard duty tools. And this is not a knock on the wave or any of the uh, standard duty sizes, but when you're accustomed to the larger tools, the smaller tools almost feel like toys even though they're not. For the majority of people, the wave is going to be the better option. It is lighter, you can carry in a multitude of different fashions if you wanted to carry it in a sheath and a pocket with the pocket clip, which I forgot to mention. You do have provisions on both of these tools to add a pocket clip and they lock in with the locks for the interior tools. So you can carry it in that fashion or you can just carry it in the pocket or in a vehicle if you wanted to. Because it's a lot lighter, it's a lot more conducive to everyday carry. Uh, for the majority of people, and by the majority I say probably 70 to 80 percent of the people, I'm going to recommend the Wave. Uh, if an all is something that you need, you might want to look at the surge or you might want to look at a different multi-tool if that is super important to you. The surge, if you are a heavy user of, a multi, of your multi-tool, and I mean 10 to 12 times a week or more that you're reaching for it in order to do small repair work, then maybe the surge might be the better option for you even though it weighs a little more. A couple of functions that I forgot to mention for the Wave and Surge is that both come with integrated lanyard loops in the event that you wanted to connect a lanyard to either of these multi-tools you have one available that is integrated into the frame. Also both of these tools have a ruler that is stamped into the frame of the tool. On the Wave that ruler is going to be 8 inches or 19 centimeters and on the surge it will be eight and a half inches or 21 and a half centimeters. Both tools are also available in black oxide and I'll leave some links below for you to check those out. Good news for Leatherman Wave fans out there. We are a couple days away from SHOT Show 2018 and Leatherman has just updated their website to include the new product line for 2018 and I'm pleased to say that the plier head in the Leatherman Wave and Charge series are going to be updated and will now include 154 CM replaceable wire cutters. Now these are not the same plier heads that are found in the Leatherman Rebar. They are specific to the Wave and Charge series and will maintain the same contoured outer edges that are present on the current pliers are uh, great for still doing that detail work. Price point on the Wave is going to rise a little bit, about $10 according to the website. Current retail is $99.95. The Wave is going to be called the Wave Plus according to the site. The Charge series is also getting updated. The Charge ALX and Charge AL apparently will be dropping from the line and will be replaced with the Charge Plus and the Charge TTI will be replaced with the Charge Plus TTI. My name is Benjamin. You've been watching my new channel, the Texas Tool Crib. I hope my video has been helpful for you. If, uh, if you did like my video, I would appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up 
And if you would, consider subscribing as I endeavor to bring you more and more uh, reviews on the things that I really like the most, tools of all shapes and sizes. Thank you for your time, and I hope to see you in the next one.